Hey guys, I was getting ready to upload part three, showing the finished punch work on the blade of this knob to harden, and it, the film was bad. My hand was in the way, you couldn't see what I was doing, and it was aggravating, so I just, I need to, I want you guys to learn, and I want, I don't want to waste your time, so. I'm going to do a couple of video series on indirect percussion using the small um, cylinder punches, and also called straight punches or peg punches. These are the two um, punches that I used to do the edge work, and these are the two punches that I used to do the notching. So the principles are about the same. These are sections of white tail deer antler, and just sort of a lower beam, I think. You can see there's a little bit of pith in there, but it's good and hard in the end. And this is a section of tine. They wear pointed and I sort of grind them flat after they get too pointed. I wear work on the edge of the shoulder here and then when they get too pointed I grind them down. Or if you made a composite tool where you could take advantage of that point you could use it as a pressure flaker and wear it down flat and then pull it and use it for a punch. I think that's something that they were doing more than we are. Um, here's the knobbed harden. It's sort of hard to tell because the um, there's some of the original series, and then punch work, quite a bit of punch work. And I really like the body that it gave me. And then I did a little antler um, edge work, and it just pressure flaking. But there are ways to use small chisel shaped punches to do very nice edge work too, and I'll show that in a later video. So. Let's start. I'm taking a page out of Jim Wynn's playbook and I wrote some things down so I could be more organized. So, and the vertical punch is also called the straight punch or a peg punch that I showed you. They can be made out of antler, from tines, from beam edges, or from the main beam, which may include the skull. They can also be made out of bone that's split lengthwise, heavy bone, and then shaped into dowels. And they can also be made out of stone. They can be elongated or disc-like and sometimes round. I believe that some disc-shaped hammer stones can be made into quick expedient notchers for some point types. And some ovoid or round hammer stones are retired and then used as punches. And sometimes turned into gaming stones after that. They can also be made out of ivory. The outer edge of the ivory generally will flake. So if that's ground off, or just allowed to flake off, then the inside more granular material of the ivory makes for a good punch, but it's it, it's better um, to use it not on a very heavy applications because it will split. The punch work on North American bifaces is a little explored and really underappreciated way to nap that I believe in, um, encompassed, um, explained a lot of the napping that was going on. Long punches like this one could be made out of a deer tine and have been used by researchers to replicate old world blades. And they work because they are placed off the rim of a core um, quite a ways and they store energy as they're struck and when the blade core is supported on the outside they can detach long really nice flakes. However, when they're used on biface edges these long punches store too much energy, the biface edge tends to drop. Getting the correct inward force is very difficult because it causes so much bending in the biface. That's why these shorter punches are much better um, on bifacial edges and they do a better job of transferring the energy. That's also a reason why um, American researchers, academic nappers, have overlooked them because they tend to use these longer punches on bifacial edges and realize that they you know that they're not very handy for finished patterns and 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 refinement so they, they sort of write off punches altogether when they should they should take another look okay there's two different support systems just to be to um actually this one is better um if you have a hard support system like a rock or a holder your angle is going to be more straight up and down for the for the longer for the larger flakes. If you're 
um, on a so soft support system, like leather on your leg or another cushion, then you can use more inward force. When using a soft support system, there are benefits to both, but when using a soft support system, you want to use very little abrasion or grinding. You want to just use the tool to brush and find your seat and get good purchase, sort of you get a feel for what the correct amount of grinding is, and then strike the punch. For hard support systems, you don't want to make isolated platforms, um, you can, but you can take advantage of more continuously ground edges to flake in series at higher angles, or in other words, down, not in. So this is how you can create diamond cr uh, cross sections with hard support systems. And um, so what else do I have? Here's some other, um, there's a very large beefy punch. This, this works well in a hard support system on a large biface. It has to be a really big biface because that's actually a really beefy punch. Um, but most of the times I use these real small punches like this. I can do a lot of edge work and some early notching with this one. And I can do a lot of edge refinement and pattern flaking with uh, something this size. It's really dinky. If a guy only had a couple tools that he wanted to bring with him, um, and wanted a soft hammer option, it's hard to beat these little punches because they weigh nothing, and you can go somewhere, find a hammer stone, an expedient hammer stone somewhere, make a biface, and you could make a, just a really a lot of different styles with just two little pieces of bone like this. How I got the idea for um, starting my education with these peg punches or straight punches is from two sources. One, Tim Dillard encouraged me and um, he saw it as a promising you know, way to explain a lot of the napping that, that didn't match our billet flaking. And D.C. Waldorf, in his book, Story in Stone, which is a beautiful, beautifully illustrated and well-written um, book on North American point types, which I suggest you go out and get if you don't already have it, mentioned on page 48, of his discussion of Eastern Parallel Lancelets, that the bold pattern on this lancelet from Ohio, the zigzag wavy edge, which is caused by flaking the high deltas and then turning it over and working on the uh, margin of the previous flake from the high delta on the reverse face back and forth, that he thought maybe that these were made with copper punches, although he strongly suggested that indirect percussion was used. Now I think that it's likely that this wasn't this type of flaking isn't um, from copper punches, but it is from a harder support system, using a small vertical punch probably of antler or bone. Here is another harden that he mentions has the same type of pattern as the Eastern Parallel Lancelet. See the wavy edge, the evenly controlled cross section, which is very difficult to do, and the strong punch notching and the evenly controlled wavy edge. And this is an untypical example, not because this flaking is untypical, but because normally the deltas are removed by following the ridges with some more flaking. So it, it, it um, gets rid of that, that look. Um, here's a Harden in my collection that has some of the same qualities. These flakes in this one are traveling much further but this could be the result of a more of a, a softer support system. So large punch notch flaking and then some very well controlled punch work resharpening that you know was broke while, it, while he was doing that aggressive work on his punching. Not all types that are beveled are always beveled. Sometimes the edges are thickened and then the, the point is resharpened along the whole face. So. Um, so now I guess it's a pretty good start, 9.25. Um, I've worked at this stuff a long time. I've used these punches a lot since the early 90s. I started probably in 1990. And I've, it's not just a novelty. It's not something that's just in my bag of tricks that I want to... There's a good reason why I use it, and there's a, there's a good reason why a lot of old point types that have strong removals from the bases and lobes and all sorts of crazy places that you can't get to with a billet have matching flakes 
on the blade edges. So there should be some distinct signatures. Um, it, it's hard to tell punch flaking from direct percussion because it's still bone and the physics are much the same. So I encourage some of you guys that are getting into traditional flint napping or some of you um, young learning academic scholars out there that are going to be um, napper archaeologists to definitely spend a lot of time with the um, small punches either horizontal or vertical though we're going to be talking about vertical punches in this video um, because it, it really explains in my mind a lot of the variation um, better than more traditional methods of you know direct percussion using large handler billets so that's all um, look forward to part two or I'll do some demonstrating and sorry I didn't get that I'm not hard on film for you take care